You'd think that measuring in at a whopping six foot 10 inches tall and having a defensive game style that could turn a game in an instant, the sport of basketball would be yours for the taking. But throw in being a black American during the 1950s and 60s and living in a hotbed of civil unrest, the task becomes a hell of a lot more difficult. That is, unless, of course, your basketball revolutionary Bill Russell, an 11-time NBA champion with the Boston Celtics and hero to America's ongoing fight against racial injustice. I, I should also say it, it's not lost on me or anybody in this room that there's enormous amount of racial tension in this country, um, an enormous amount of social injustice, and Bill, you probably remember this, but the first All-Star game that took place in Los Angeles was in 1963. You were the MVP. And then, of course, the Celtics went on to win a championship that year. But maybe even more importantly, then in the summer of 1963, you stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial when Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech. And so, to me, there's this direct through line from players like Bill Russell roughly 55 years ago to LeBron and Kevin Durant speaking out today on issues that are important to them. Born in 1934, William Felton Russell grew up in Monroe, Louisiana, in America's segregated South. But when World War II broke out, the family settled into the projects of Oakland, California, and into a life of poverty, where Bill's dad became his hero. Older Russell had a strict but fair influence and kept the family safe. But when young Bill discovered basketball, the kudos was shared with George Meekin of the Minneapolis Lakers a six-foot-ten pioneer of American professional basketball. Surprisingly, as a kid, the game of basketball didn't come easy to Bill Russell. He lacked polish. But once he began mastering the skills that went into having the NBA's MVP trophy eventually named in his honor, he upped the ante and began blocking shot after shot, creating offense from his own defense and influencing the game like no other. At high school, Bill Russell developed a spellbinding defensive style and jumped to block shots in a manner never seen before. He attended the University of San Francisco after being offered a scholarship in 1953, punching what Bill considered to be his ticket to escape the poverty and the racism he'd become so accustomed to. But he was wrong. Russell was selected at USF along with two other black Americans. Hal Perry, and future Boston teammate and NBA Hall of Famer K.C. Jones, with the three becoming the first black trio to feature in a college starting lineup. And it wasn't long before racial discrimination reared up at a 1954 all-college tournament, where each were denied hotel accommodation in Oklahoma City due to their color. But any reservations Russell, Perry, and Jones may have had over racial intolerance coming from their teammates were dismissed when the entire team chose to stay together in a vacant college dormitory. The experience helped galvanize the playing group and led to two straight college championships in 1955 and 1956. In the 1955 season, 
Russell averaged 21.4 points and 20.4 rebounds, leading his team to an almost flawless season of 28 wins and one loss. Russell had put together one of the great college seasons of all time, but perhaps it was too good. He won the NCAA's Player of the Year, the Final Four's MVP, and First Team All-American. But the National Collegiate Athletic Association then initiated a number of rule changes, known as Russell's Rules, to help restrict his powerful influence on the game. In the history of basketball, only four players, George Meekin, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, and Russell have had rules instituted to prevent them from scoring. But altering the game's guidelines wouldn't stop Russell's influence. Just a year later, he led the USF to the perfect season in 1956, with Russell averaging 20.5 points and 21 rebounds and an impeccable 29-0 record. At USF, Russell was also noted for his efforts in the high jump. One of his highest leaps on record occurred at the West Coast Relays event, with Russell clearing 2.6 meters to equal Charlie Dumas, a future Olympian. Both men made it to the 1956 Melbourne Olympics, but Russell left high jump glory to Dumas. Instead, focusing on captaining USA basketball to a fourth consecutive gold medal. Olympic Park, another game site. Where if it wasn't for the Olympics, Bill Russell could have turned professional sooner. He was drafted by legendary Boston Celtics coach Red Arback in 1956, but chose to exercise his right as an amateur athlete to attend the Melbourne Games. When he did return, however, for his 1956-1957 NBA rookie season, he immediately set about cementing himself as a champion of the game. His career spanned 13 years, from 1956 to 1969, and during that time, Russell was a five-time MVP, a 12-time NBA All-Star, and along with Coach Arbach, became a beacon for a Celtic dynasty that won 11 NBA championships, eight of those straight. The game had never seen someone as strong, quick, intense, or as intelligent. And he was just as unrelenting in his pursuit of civil rights for black Americans. In 1961, Russell and his black teammates set out a game against the St. Louis Hawks after being refused service at a coffee shop in Lexington, Kentucky. In 1967, he was an integral part of the Cleveland Summit, a meeting of influential black athletes supporting boxer Muhammad Ali in his refusal to be drafted to the Vietnam War. And a year earlier, Russell had again furthered the legacy of black Americans in basketball with his appointment as not just the first black coach of the NBA, but the first playing coach in wake of Red Auerbach's retirement from the Celtics. Over the next two seasons, Russell put together a 102-62 regular season record 
while leading Boston to back-to-back -to -back NBA titles in 1968 and 1969, breaking down another barrier and paving the way for the cavalcade of modern-day black coaches. I don't uh, anticipate any problems with the guys, because one thing that we've always had in the Celtics is mutual respect. And we think that's uh, the most necessary ingredient for a winning combination. And when a reporter naively asked Russell if, as the first black coach of a major league sport, could he do the job impartially without any racial prejudice in reverse? Russell was emphatic in his response. Yes. Because the, more, the most important factor is respect. In basketball, we respect the man for his ability, period. Putting it simply, Bill Russell is the most successful player in NBA history. And to put it mildly, what he was able to achieve for black America through such an era of racism and discrimination is profound. It's why in NBA basketball, when you think of the game's most valued player, you think of Bill Russell.